Hey guys, so this is part two of the conversation I had with my mother-in-law about race. And first, I wanna say thank you so much to everybody who, who shared the kind words, the thoughts, the questions um, after watching part one. I really appreciate it. And I know for me, there were a lot more questions that came up that I now wanna go back and ask her um, just from that talk, but also from some of the things that I'm hearing from you. So. I want to keep this conversation going with us and I really appreciate the time that you're taking to watch. Secondly, so this part of the conversation, I wanted to find out her reaction to what we've been watching happen in this country, um, certainly including the death of George Floyd. And her answer to that really opened up a different conversation about what to expect for our children. And um, that is at the core of this what she thinks in terms of when I should have the discussion, um, when we should be talking to our kids about race. So in these last two pieces of our conversation, um, that's what I'm, I'm intrigued to see what you guys think about that. So here you go. This is Betty Jo um, talking a little bit more now about the current day. I mean, would you say that your, has your opinion throughout your lifetime ever changed about, about police? Did it change and when? Yes, for me, it did. When I got, maybe high school after high school it, it was not as bad or i guess another word could be they showed it before the uh racisms with the police and all of that but we did not see it i mean you did not openly know it once i was about 16 or 17. but my mom always told us, you know, be careful where you go. Um, she made sure she knew where we were, who we went with, and you went with people who would not cause trouble because that was their way of telling us that the police is always going to be looking for us. So what was your reaction when you saw this go down in Minneapolis? and other places where it's happened? I have seen it throughout my life. I really have. Um, hurt, sad that it's 2020 and I'm, I'm almost 65 years old and I'm still experiencing the same thing at 65 that I experienced at six. So my son, as you know, is six. When do I start talking to him about this? When do we, when do me and, and Craig, Melvin as I call him, need to have the conversation? And, you know, I don't want to say that I've lived in a bubble because you know it's there, but until this, it seemed like a very surreal thing. Like, well, he everything seems very safe for him. How much do you think he's going to have to watch out for? I think he's going to have to watch out for all the love of it, for everything. Unless, unless after this, our country can do something about police brutality, about racism, about looking at black children a little bit different. And not just black children, certain black children that if you're in a certain part of the country, it's worse, I think. I think in Southern states, it's worse. So when would you say, honestly, that, that we should begin those conversations? And what do you think that looks like? I think you're gonna, put, you're gonna start those conversations pretty soon. I think you're gonna start them when he enters first grade, probably. Because I think that when children go to school, that that's when they, questions start to come up or somebody will say something to him that you're different or and i don't know that it will happen to dale yet um where you can't come to my party because and those kinds of things used to happen even with my children i mean i knew you can't go to this party because you're black and my parent my parents don't quite yeah, it's okay for us to play at school, but it's not okay for you to come to my house and spend the night. Does that, but that doesn't still happen. Does that still happen? Yes, 
I think that does still happen. That happens here in South Carolina. But you think that any child who is black or biracial still needs to, you have to have that discussion. Yeah, you have to have the talk because he's not going to understand if he's with his friends and something goes off and he's the one that they target or he's the one that they pick on. But he wasn't the one that was really doing it. Only because of his skin color. Only because of his skin color. Or if something happens in a neighborhood. Oh, he did it. Because he's black. Or he was walking his dog. How do you um, start that conversation? How would you, how did you start that conversation? Because honestly, for us, it's, it's a thing where we haven't said black and white, unless, unless the question comes up from him, you know? To be honest, and you know this, I don't know that Dale sees black and white yet. I don't think he does. I mean, he's, he's never said anything to say, you know, I'm darker or anything like that. So that's going to be hard. That's that's going to be hard just to start a conversation with. Um, I would. I would not do. I would not tell him all the scary facts. Yeah, I would not because mm-hmm. we don't want to scare him. We just want to tell him that sometimes in this country. That there are things that you have to be mindful right now, but we're working on those things. They're working on those things. You have to be mindful of places you go, who you're with, and how you approach the policeman. That if he approaches you, that you have to act in a certain way. Do not put your hands in your pockets. Never put your hands, never go in your pockets for anything. Um, that is what I taught my that is what I told my children. Don't go in your pockets. Be very respectful to them. Yes, sir. No, sir. If they tell you to get out the car, you get out the car. Just don't get out the car in a dark place. Try to drive where there's some light. So that if something does happen, or if they do something to you, that somebody can see. But my, my children didn't see color for years, Lindsay. Um, and I don't know that Craig ever saw color because I taught them. But back then, and this is not a good term now, we taught our children to be colorblind. I don't know whether you've ever heard that word. We taught them to be colorblind. So they never saw color. They never saw color, but I also taught them that there are things that can happen to you because you're black. So you beware that if you get stopped or, you know, if you go places you shouldn't be, that these are the things that can happen. How did you teach them to be colorblind for so long then? They saw me, which is, they saw how I act. And I taught them that they were better. They were just as good as anybody else. So you don't see color. Nobody's white, nobody's black. We're all God's children. And that is what I believe, that we all are God's children. We really are. So there is, skin is only, this is only your outside. When we bleed on the inside, we all bleed the same color. When we hurt here, we all hurt the same way. That part of the conversation with Betty Jo um, was really powerful to me, uh, hearing her take on how she believes my children might react to what she thinks they could deal with. Um, you know, there's no other way to describe it than just a lot and heavy. And I'm so thankful to her for having this conversation. So, um, again, I want to encourage conversation. I really want to hear what you guys are thinking. Uh, the next part of this conversation is some of your direct questions that I pulled that I that intrigued me as well. So that as well as the surprising story she ended up telling me about when she knew that me and 
Craig were dating. And, um, and it sounds funny because I don't normally call him Craig. I call him Melvin, as you know. But um, I didn't think about asking her about that piece of the story. And she started talking about it. And I, it kind of took my breath away because I didn't realize that part of the story. So anyway, um, again, can't wait to hear from you guys. And thank you for watching.